it's time to debut our newest bit, which is called Image in the 90s. And we're going to start with Mark Silvestri. Cyberforce, baby. Cyberforce. So I had never, ever in my life ever read the original Cyberforce run. So I recently picked up the original four-issue miniseries, which is titled The Ten Men of War. So what is Cyberforce? It's a copy of the X-Men. So originally, Mark Silvestri had actually pitched this to Marvel. He was in New York at a Marvel Comics Summit for the X-Men because he was a very popular artist on Uncanny X-Men. And he pitched an idea that he wanted to do a story about a government organization that was taking mutants and cybernetically enhancing them. So they're cybernetic, cybernetically enhanced mutants. So they already have powers, and then those powers are advanced even further through cybernetics. Very, think of Wolverine, Weapon X, right? Speaking of Wolverine, Rip Claw. Oh my God. So anyway, he wanted to call it Cyberforce. Bob Harris didn't want to work it out. That was the same weekend that he had to talk with Todd and, and Rob and decided he would join Image. Took this idea over to Image. He wanted to launch his career at Image with a book that was very close to what he was known for. Most of the, 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 the Image partners, when they first launched, they were doing books incredibly close to what they were already doing. I would say Spawn is probably a big thing away from that and maybe Savage Dragon a little bit, but Wildcat, Cyberforce, Youngblood, yeah, 100%. Shadowhawk, Valentino, I think, wanted to do Wolverine, but we'll, we'll get to Shadowhawk one day. Don't worry, TM. Speaking of Wolverine, by the way, Mark Silvestri, a great artist on Wolverine on X-Men, and Rip Claw is by far my favorite character out of this run of Cyberforce. Overall... Interesting enough characters in that early 90s kind of way, but the story doesn't ever get into it. So it's about this ragtag group of cybernetically enhanced mutants. And there's this, what is it? Cyber, what is the agency called? Oh, I don't even remember what it's called now, but they're called Cyber Force. And then the bad guys are like cyber something else. I don't even remember it now. Um, but they're, they're, they're away from this agency I'm just trying to do what they do. There's some interesting characters, though. Like, I think Cyblade has a cool look, but you don't get anything out of the characters when you read this first initial arc. You get some really nice artwork. Um, and the the thing is, though, in, in issue three, the artwork gets a little bit lackluster for me because three different uh, inkers come in. The first issue is all penciled and inked by Mark Silvestri. Scott Williams comes in on part two, I think. And then you have Dan Panosian and Scott Williams and somebody else on part three. And it feels a little bit clunky. But not only does it introduce Ripclaw and these other characters, but Velocity as well. She's kind of the Jubilee. So it starts off, she's being tracked down by this organization. Cyberdyne? It's not Cyberdyne. It's something. Oh my goodness. What is it? I'm trying to look through the issue. I know they got to... It's got to be here. It's going to spell out pretty soon. But anyway, so they're after Velocity because she's escaped from the program, just like all the people that make up Cyberforce. And, I mean, it's interesting enough. I think the first issue is pretty solid. The artwork is great. Um, Rip Claw's a really cool character. The villain setup, it's interesting. They're all run by this, like, there's, like, this mother of mutants that they say or something like that. And uh, But overall, I think the art's fine. And it's a decent first issue. It's a really solid first issue. Then it had a lot of delays. This was something that happened and plagued Image in those early days. They were trying to do too much too soon and things like that. If anybody knows the name of that the, the organization working against Cyberforce, I cannot seem to find a page in which they say it. But like, what is it? Basilisk, that's uh, the leader of it. What's her? I uh, see. I don't even. This is the first time I've ever read this stuff. And I actually thought the first issue read really well. And I thought the second issue read very, very well. But then when you get to the third issue, which I was rather excited for, because the third issue has pit. And we'll eventually catch up in images. 
But the Del Keown character was launching at Image at the time and Pitt's in there and it's just kind of an after, like, why is he even in there? It doesn't really make sense. Um, but at times I really like the artwork. Interesting enough characters, but they don't get into any of them. The one character that they get into is Velocity and it feels kind of silly. There's Pitt. Pitt shows up and they think he's caused this explosion. They fight him for a moment. Then all of a sudden they're like, cool. There's the, the, the ultimate villain. I don't, it's so freaking weird. It starts getting so muddy and clumsy at issue number three. Now, this is a four-issue series that's doing the opposite of what Tom King does, what we were talking about. By the way, there's the Rip Claw and Pit um, team up right there, which would be cooler if I actually knew the fuck more about Rip Claw. <laughs> so this, basically what I'm trying to say is that they're doing the opposite of Tom King. They're telling too much story and too little of time in this and they're doing it with cool artwork but it does suffer in issue three it feels very clunky the story starts speeding up really quick um velocity's talking about cyber force being her family and say cyber data thank you so much cardstock uh variant that's what it is cyber data um you got this so you got the idea of mutants and mutants are revolting but then you got this organization that's cyber data and they're trying to take these mutants and cybernetically enhance them. Some of them have escaped. They formed Cyber Force. So it's very X-Men, um, but a little bit different. But it feels so rushed after the second issue. The first two issues, I think, are paced pretty well. It's got solid artwork, decent enough introductions to the characters. And there's a lot of backstory there. Now, obviously, this got an issue number zero right after by Walt Simonson. And then... Um, got elaborated into like a 35 issue mini series or a uh, ongoing series, which I'll definitely be checking out. I already have some of those issues. So if, if you come across any cyber force issues cheap enough, um, you can throw them my way. You know, you're always welcome to just let me know. Um, but at the end here, so you got the major, uh, ballistic, is that her name? Like the main kind of villain working for cyber data, trying to hunt down these mutants. And then this, there's this mutant leader. That's kind of like a, a Magneto. She's trying to like, like overthrow cyber data. It's, it's just, it just becomes so convoluted, but it's, it could have been, it's got potential. Could have worked if they would have just trusted this series to go, but they didn't. They just, they wanted to do this mini series to see if it worked and they crammed a lot of ideas in there and, and the artwork felt a bit rushed and you can feel how it just went crazy. Anyway, there's this weird bit in here where all of a sudden the villain mutant is the villain from cyber data's mother and then Velocity is her sister. So that's the weird forced emotional moment. And then the mother dies, mother may I? And then literally it just wraps up in like like four panels, like super, super freaking quick. So that's Cyber Force, the, uh, the original miniseries. Um, overall, I love one and two. I think it's fine. I think it's solid. I think it gets clunky in three and it's a really quick wrap up. And in issue number four. So overall, I would give it probably 2.5 to three you digs. Three you digs. Three you digs. Because I really appreciate what they were doing. Cyber Force, they, you know, Mark Sebastian wanted to do something a little bit more safe, you know, until he moved on to other work. And, and eventually, Mark Sebastian really carved out his niche at Image with Top Cow, of course, doing... Witchblade and Darkness. And Darkness is is some of my favorite Mark Silvestri stuff. And we will be covering that on Image in the 90s. But there's my copy of issue number one. Um, still got the whole how to get a copy of issue number zero of Image Comics. And, you know, it's cool to look back and see that, like, Malibu Comics was helping them distribute their stuff. And, you know, it's got the gatefold cover. That's super cool. There's my issue number two right there. So right now I want to know, what do you think about Cyberforce overall? Um, I just feel like the characters need a little bit more development. And I, I'm sure that happens in the in the series going on. As much as I really don't like issue number three, I really like the cover. Pit by Mark Silvestri there. And then issue four has got a foil embossed cover because it's the fucking 90s. So there you go. So overall, I, I like Cyber Force. I'm excited to check more of it out. Um, I'm definitely more of a, a fan of Mark Silvestri now than I ever have been, um, though I really do like The Darkness. And so I'm really, really excited to get into it. Um, but that was, uh, I want to know, what do you think about Cyber Force? If you read it, um, what characters do you like? Ripclaw, by far, is the standout character. He's basically Wolverine, like a Native American version of Wolverine. There's very little development on any character in this book. So it's just a bunch of Flash that eventually gets just kind of lost in, in the muddiness of, of issue three and four. So 
really good in the first half, not so good in the second half. And that's what I thought about Cyberforce. And that was our first bit of Image in the 90s. 